So now here we are. What can I do? We tried to answer it a little bit. You know, the, the answer was ask questions, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. So how do I choose supplements that are truly high quality? and not fall for marketing buzzwords and wellness industry misinformation around quality. And well, I'll start out by repeating something. Uh, this isn't easy and it, it's hard to get to the real information. I, I do this for a living and it's exceptionally challenging. I've been lied to uh, numerous times. Most recently, I just lost 15,000 bucks from a supplement company. They were making a specific type of product for me. They were ranked number three in the world, recommended to me by one of the leading uh, experts in the field as a quality company. And they took my deposit, started making the product. And then when I asked for stuff for legal compliance, they said that we are not going to give it to you. And the only reason that they wouldn't give me the information that I was looking for was that they were not making the product themselves. So they are a manufacturer, but they outsourced the manufacturing to another company and they wanted to keep that information private. And so it's scary. If I am bumping up against this and I know what questions to ask and I have contracts that make people do certain things, how the heck are you going to get that information, right? This entire industry just exists behind a curtain, right? The all and powerful Oz behind it, except you know, this one is nearly permanently in place. It is very difficult to get that curtain down. And so the only answer that we have, the, the solution to this problem that we're all kind of talking about here is an industry that has 100% transparency that is then verified by some third party. And then you have a working government agency to make sure that all of the things are working, right? You know, you need surprise visits, as we were saying. You can't just show up announce and be like, hey, clean up your stuff, I'm coming, right? That doesn't make any sense. So until we have that, we need some other mechanism to determine supplement quality. And we have to understand one basic piece. There's always going to be some leap of faith. You know, if you try to be perfect, you're gonna go crazy. And so, but what we can do is we can build a system where those leaps of faith are few and far between. Right. And the questions that we ask, like Mark suggested that we should, are consistent and applied consistently to all the different groups. So we need a framework just like we did with diet. I mean, diet is complex and it's constantly changing. And how do we handle the new information and how do we get to the truth? We need a structure. Right. We have to eat to fuel our fire. We have to not play dietary Jenga. Right. Those are the things. So with supplement quality, it's the same thing. And as with us flipping everything upside down as we do, uh, you know, my t-shirt says that we do that. Um, it starts with redefining. So we have to redefine quality. And as I said, quality is so much more than regulatory compliance, right? When people talk about quality now, they're talking about good manufacturing practice. That's really what they're saying. The GMPs. Does the product meet labeled claims? Which, you know, it's saying that it has what it has and that's it. And as Mark and I pointed out, though, you know, a finished supplement product that you can buy can often be in violation of that super duper low competency bar. And there are moldy cheeseburgers around you. And you have no idea if you're getting that dumpster fire grade supplements, the mediocre middlers or those best in class supplements. Supplement quality is so much more than good manufacturing. So there are four things to consider when we're talking about supplement quality. So first, Regulatory. Does it meet labeled claims? That should be the lowest bar. That should be minimum competency for any brand you, you talk to, and they have to be able to prove it. So that's an easy one. Let's throw that out. We've already beaten that up. Two, very important to me, therapeutics. Does the supplement that I'm buying work? <laughs> Does it actually do something? Is it the best option for treating the thing or helping with the health concern? Will it get absorbed into my body? Does the science back it up? Three, the ethics. Is this a good, not just for me product, but for the world type product, right? So here's a question for you. Garden of Life is a supplement company. Huge, right? Lots of people buy it. One of the biggest in, in, in the country, if not world. And it's owned by Nestle. Are you okay with that? Most probiotic strains come from places like DuPont. Is that okay? How are the animals that are used for the manufacturing treated? How does the business behave in the world? 
What are the ethics surrounding this product? And finally, the dollars, which is very important to a lot of people. Am I paying a fair price? And listen, if you want cheap, the only way that cheap happens in supplements is some choices made. And if you're aware of what choices they were and you're willing to go along with those choices, then fine. But I personally don't want cheap. I want right. And so price has to be commensurate with the quality materials and what it takes to be compliant through the manufacturing, right? What does it actually cost to do the thing right? And as long as that is honest and there's a healthy profit in there, I'm cool, right? I don't want dollar store supplements. So these four things make up what I call the supplement quality standard, science, compliance, virtues, and value, right? And so just like the vital five and the wellness pyramid, I say them in a specific order. The science is the most important thing to me because again, regulatory compliance, very important, but that should be minimum that like, that should just be the the barrier to entry is that I'm going to make the product legally okay. (laughs) But so the science is most important. You know, research and academic discussion is one thing, but your supplement should be scientifically sound and be able to deliver on its promises. And I've said that there's this gap between the idea that omega-3 is good for you and the omega-3 product that you're buying and taking, right? If you're not getting the right dose in a form that your body can use, omega-3 isn't going to be good for you. And that concept is lost to us when it comes to supplements. We don't make that dose science therapeutic connection. We just buy the the bottle that says turmeric on it, right? It's got to be good. Well, it might be that, uh, you know, fast food cheeseburger that you're getting. So the other thing, you know, the other analogy I use a lot is the, the Tylenol as a pharmacist analogy. You come to me and you have a headache. And you say, I want Tylenol. And I give you something that says Neil's Magic Tylenol product and it has three milligrams of Tylenol in it. One, I hope you would never use that brand again. And two, I hope you would never trust me again. And this is the essential to what is going on in the supplement industry, uh, especially when it comes to science. For this component, you should be asking this set of questions. I've heard that this ingredient, let's just say omega-3, I heard omega-3 is good for me, right? What's the science there? what dose do I need to get those results? How long do I need to take it for to get those results? Are there different forms of omega-3 that could matter to me? And how do I know that I'm actually going to utilize what's in that dose? Am I going to absorb it? And is my body going to use it? Those are important questions. And you know, a great example of this is is there's like a billion people that take magnesium because their doctor told them to, right? They're taking magnesium oxide too. And the doctor's like, hey, take the magnesium oxide because it's at every pharmacy, you know, and that's fine if they need help pooping, you know, because 95% of that magnesium isn't going anywhere except for the poop tube. And it's just going to go right through. And it's great if you're constipated or if you need to have frequent bowel movements, that type of magnesium is awesome. But if you went to the doctor and you needed magnesium for your blood for some other reason to get into your whole body, magnesium oxide is not the best choice. The science isn't there. And so when it comes to supplements, the science matters. So let's talk about compliance. We've already beaten this one to death here today. The loose guidelines means that anyone can claim manufacturing compliance, whatever, right? So good manufacturing practices is minimum. The regulatory stuff is minimum. Your supplement maker should be passionate about quality and committed to raising the bar for these regulations industry-wide. They should be bragging about how good they are with quality, and they should be one of the voices like us screaming from the rooftops that things need to change. And so I'm going to link the FDA letters in the show notes because the question you should be asking is, is this company getting in trouble for stuff. (laughs) So you can go to the FDA site and you can type in the company's name and you'll be surprised at some of the companies that you'll see in there. And you can also then look at customer advocacy groups and consumer labs and consumer reports and all of that stuff. But remember, as I said before, in the first section, it's not a comprehensive picture. It's only telling a part of a story. You can't just lean on those things uh, only. So now let's talk about the virtues of a supplement. Is your supplement ethically and sustainably sourced? Can you, at the end of the day, feel good about using this supplement? So your supplement brand should walk its talk, right? Uh, Every supplement brand is claiming that it's green and it's quality and it is good for the world and they have this great mission. 
brands of all sizes should demonstrate and not just claim real commitment to doing the right thing for the workers, the environment, and for you. You can't always win, though, right? So I said before, DuPont, some would argue, is one of those dirty companies, right? Pfizer made COVID vaccines, and they're looking now to price those vaccines at three to four times what they charge the government. But those DuPont probiotic strains are pretty awesome. And COVID vaccines saved a life or two during the pandemic, right? And so it brings up a point here for all of the points of the supplement quality standard that needs to be addressed, right? Perfect is impossible. We have to balance the best of what we have. So the purpose here is to create a structure so that we can be thorough and we can be consistent. And we should strive to make better and better choices. So we need standards and we have to apply those standards and they should change as we get better and better data. So when you're out here and you're listening to all this stuff, just thinking about supplement quality outside of regulatory compliance is going to put you light years ahead of most people and it puts you closer towards optimizing your wellness experience and your dollar. So we can't be perfect, but we can try. So speaking of dollar, let's talk about value. When it comes to supplements, high price tags rarely mean better supplements. So your supplement needs to balance a high standard of quality, results, and a fair, equitable price. It's quite simple. Prices should be reflective of what you're getting. But it's not in this industry at all. And on the other side, as Mark and I were saying, you may want the best quality, but you're not really willing to pay it. And that's an important thing to understand. That's a dynamic here that's setting the pricing around supplements. There's a race to the bottom to get you to buy stuff because people know cheap supplements sell. And so, again, to make cheap, you have to make a choice. So it's that balance. That's what we're trying to say. When it comes to price, you know, besides the pricing going crazy everywhere with this inflationary stuff, you know, I think that the, you know, supplement value is the easiest yardstick for comparing products. It's how you actually compare apples and apples. And in fact, when people come to me and talk to me about CBD, one of the first things I'll say is that you can get great CBD for less than 10 cents per milligram. So if you're looking at a bottle and it says 750 milligrams, 750 times 10 cents is $75. If your CBD costs more than 75 bucks, you're getting overcharge because you can get a great one for less than $75. Now, if it costs $20 for 750 milligrams, you can assume there's something wrong because it costs something to deliver that product to the market. And 750 milligrams costs some sort of money, and it's probably more than $20 when it's all said and done. A great example is pomegranate supplements. Have you ever bought a pomegranate? They're expensive right? And have you ever tried to juice a pomegranate? It's like a full day's activity, unless you watch that YouTube video where they show you how to open them up real quickly. Well, pomegranates are rare, they're expensive, and they're difficult to like manipulate and juice. So how could your pomegranate supplement possibly be $7, right? It, it would cost more than $7 in raw material to deliver what they're saying that they're delivering, right? So when you use the full supplement quality standard and then look at pricing, you're getting a good sense of where you should spend your money. There's dudes that go to the, the freaking muscle heads shop online and they buy the barrel size of uh, their protein powder. And that's fine. And, you know, if it costs you 20 bucks. I'm happy for you. But, you know, how much protein you're actually getting per scoop and and what else is in there, right? It's being made in like an opioid den in Afghanistan. And again, nothing against Afghanistan. It's just a little bit out of the reach of the FDA, right? And so on the other side, you have the, the hoity-toity green mom protein shake. And it's $80 for like a thimble, you know? $20 for a barrel, $80 for a thimble. There's a, a disconnect here, right? There's nothing in a protein supplement that demands 80 bucks for a thimble right? And it's still probably made in that opioid den. There's a disconnect between the price and quality. And we have to understand the thing that we're buying before we can really make that judgment about cheap or not cheap. The supplement industry is the wild west when it comes to regulating quality. And with the bar set so low, a product that makes the grade won't always make a difference for your health. It can even do more harm than good. So it's time to evaluate quality beyond manufacturing. 
we need a model that considers everything that really matters in a supplement. How it works, how it's sourced, how it's made, and how it's priced. And that's what I'm trying to do with the supplement quality standard. That's what I'm trying to bring with Woodstock Vitamins and my practice here in Woodstock, New York. And that's what I preach to all those healthcare professionals that listen to me. And that's what I'm going to bring to the table when I'm developing products for other companies. We need a better system, a better model to make up for the mess that is the supplement industry.